Hey, what's up guys, Sir Amanon here, and welcome to another video. So this is going to be another episode of Road to 1000 Dueling with Grading. We're of course going to be continuing our adventures with Tri Brigade Lure Lusk, the deck that I have uh, sort of been one-tricking this entire format so far on the ladder. But as you can probably tell by now, I've been having a ton of fun with the deck, and hopefully you guys at home have also been enjoying these videos. But yeah, our opponent today is going to be Bower Boss 38 on Sword Soul, which is a pretty interesting matchup that I have not yet gotten a chance to feature on the channel yet. Uh, kind of surprising. But both of these decks have a lot of uh, space for non-engine cards, so it makes it so that there's a high level of interactivity regardless of who goes first, and I think that is pretty well demonstrated in this match here. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and start with this matchup here without any further ado. So we do, in fact, win the RPS, which, despite what I just said, is still very advantageous, of course, setting up. And we're going to choose to go first. Our opening hand is going to be Forbidden Chalice, Wagtail, Canary, Call by the Grave, and Fractal. So hand is very strong, despite the fact that it doesn't contain Warbler. Um, we still have many ways to kind of combo off here, and I'll run through the different options as uh, we play out our turn. But yeah, super strong. And then their hand going second is going to be Desires, Ashina, Taya, Moye, and Chalice. So their hand's also pretty good. Uh, both of us are on Chalice, very, very popular pick right now, and then they have a fair amount of engine cards too. So no hand traps in their hand, notably. Uh, we're going to be getting things off with a copy of Fractal. So there's a couple of options to go for here. Uh, I chose to send Cobalt Sparrow. So there's actually a line where if you open Fractal plus just any tribe base, it doesn't even matter what these are. Uh, you can like Fractal, send Kits, and Nerval to add Keras. Uh, this is something I did not cover in my big combo video, but I discovered it kind of after the fact, and I've been doing it a bit more recently. But yeah, you can go and uh, send, or yeah, search Keras, and then pitch the uh, tribe base in your hand for the fourth name engrave, and then summon out the Keras, banish four for the omen, and then you could like link two for uh, Fairy Jit, and then omen search Cobalt Sparrow, and then proceed from there. Typically, that ends you on uh, a three to four map Robin plus the uh, Simorg and Apex Avian, uh, which is great because Simorg is another threat that they have to contest since it's follow up and protection. Uh, but this play that I choose to do instead is one that I do because I want to play around Imperm a bit. Because if I commit my entire resource pool to Keras that gets Impermed, uh, Barrier Canary isn't actually a follow up because the Swagtail just would be out of grave. Like, you'd be banished, right? Um, so I do this route, even though it exceeds lock you, uh, and you can't go for Simorg early, which is unfortunate. It does get you uh, a decent far way of the way through just playing through Imperm, because like if this got Impermed, not a big deal. I could just like search the Sapphire off the recital anyway, since I'm kind of ahead by one search by opening the Wagtail. Um, so that was kind of my logic there, because uh, even though hand traps are falling out of favor a little bit right now, it's not enough to the point where I want to like completely just discount the fact that Imperm uh, is in the format and stuff. Uh, so yeah, of course they have Call by the Grave for like Ash Valor, but um, I still want to respect as much as I can. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go for uh, Turquoise Warbler off of this uh, Recital Starling here since we have Bird Call access. And that's quite nice because uh, we can Bird Call to summon out the Warbler, and that is pretty strong. So yeah, we're going to search out the Bird Call off this Warbler, or, sorry, off this Wagtail. And then we're going to Overlay for the Recital. And then uh, Recital is going to search us a copy of Nerval. I choose not to go for DD Crow. Uh, because the matchup is blind, which is, you know, reasonable. Maybe you want to have more interruptions if your board gets cleared. Because, um, like, regardless of what trout I took, I couldn't get Omen, or sorry, Oath into Grave anyways. So we're always losing to Dark Ruler or Main Deck Droplet. Um, so, like, maybe you could argue that, oh, this should be, like, another disruption just in case, like, your board gets wiped um, or cleared or negated or whatever. Um, and that's fair, but there's also the argument where, like, these two engine or non-engine cards are probably good enough. They're pretty strong. And then this could just serve as more follow-up to help push like on the reverse, right? On like, on the next turn. And that's kind of what I was uh, prioritizing more in this specific case. So yeah, they're gonna go, or we're gonna go for your Utopic Draco future, and then we're gonna go for the Bear Call. Bit of a misclick, but we're gonna search a follow-up Bear Canary, uh, which is great because this allows us to warbler into the uh, Sapphire or Sapphire Swallow, and then once our Robin gets cleared, if, if it goes to grave, we can add back our turquoise warbler. So that gives us two points of Lurilusk follow-up uh, through the Warbler plus Bear Canary. Uh, you'll notice I chose not to summon Nerval here. Uh, you could, definitely, because it is follow-up underneath the Robin if you just detach it. Uh, plus, it gives the extra bounce and uh, the extra 500 attack to make it harder for your opponent to run over it. And it does matter against you know bigger monsters like the Sword Souls. The thing is, is that uh, I, again, want to prioritize follow-up. So Nerval here is pretty good because it represents two uh, forms of follow-up once it gets linked away. Um, so like you have Keras follow-up there um, too. So I do like that option. It just helps you like be able to push more. Like if you want to go for like Shrike, if it gets negated, you can go for it again, or like Shrike plus uh, DDL, which is another way to clear boards. And you can go for like a Lulisk follow-up afterwards. So 
Yeah, I think that a four material robin is generally sufficient in a lot of cases. And um, again, you know, if your opponent has a way to clear the board, none of it really matters too much anyways, and you'd rather have the follow-up. So yeah, uh, I go for the format robin. Uh, something also to note in this matchup in particular is that Bashe can always just spin the robin. So it's not a guarantee that you will get something back. So that is something to note. Uh, they do drop a uh, drop up for turn, so yeah, the whole discussion about wanting to have follow up here definitely did matter, um, because we'd be uh, short one follow up if we put the uh, nerve ball underneath this robin. So it's like little things like this that definitely do matter, um, and it's something to kind of just keep in mind uh, because drop it, of course, is super super popular right now. So they're gonna activate desires first things first, and that's gonna banish ten. And then they're going to change Roplet here, and they choose to send one, which I find to be interesting. Uh, they hit the Robin, and I definitely am thinking that they almost certainly have another way to stop the Utopia Draco future in their hand. Um, because, like, sending two was completely just free right there. Like, not really any reason not to. But yeah, they're going to banish 10 and then draw into Longgun and Call By. So, actually, we both have Call By Chalice, which is pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, they're going to go ahead and banish a fair amount of their 10 Yees, but not all of them. So they're still in a fine spot here. Uh, so yeah, they ask for the attack and Robin. I actually miscalculate because I for some reason thought that Barrow Canary was underneath this. Uh, it was not, so this should only be a thousand. Uh, the math does end up mattering in the end, even though I take a little bit less damage uh, than I should. But yeah, just something to point out there. Um, Ashina going to summon itself to the field, and then they're going to link that off for a copy of the Monk. And then here I consider if I want to use Call by the Grave or not. And so I think that I do use it here. Um, yeah, I think on the Summon of Monk, and I choose to call by the Grave this. So I do it because I want to cut off Bashuda Axis because it's an extender, plus it's one of the outs to Robin. I mentioned Basha earlier, but uh, Bashuda is another one here. So that's like something that I want to make sure that ha like it happens in terms of just Robin going to Grave. Um, so I can add back because I am fairly confident that my board is going to get wiped this turn. Like there's no way that this is surviving. Um, and you could argue that maybe it's better to hold it for Ecclesia if they have it, because they could just follow up Ecclesia right here. Um, and then that would not be very good for me if like that was the only way for Sword or into Sword to lax us. Um, but also like this is like the more guaranteed uh, resource that they have. Um, like so if they have Ecclesia, we'll have to deal with their uh, or their Sword Souls anyways, which is you know what the Chalice is here for, plus my so far unnegated Draco future. So I decided to just uh, take the gamble on that because, again, Vishuda is just like really, really solid uh, against what I'm trying to accomplish, which is maximum follow-ups. Uh, so yeah, they're gonna uh, normal summon Moye next as a follow-up, so they're gonna reveal Taya here. And then I chain Draco Future because, of course, uh, it's still not negated yet, but they're gonna chain Chalice to this. And I think about it and I'm like, okay, so if they have enough reasonable ways to play, they can maybe just hold this Chalice uh, and then, you know, they could just use it as another form of interruption. So this makes me think that they don't have the extender in their hand. Um, so that's why I decided to go and Chalice in response on the Smoye, because I'm like, okay, they reveal Taya, so unless that they have Huang Yun, which I didn't think they had because of the way they played this, um, we should be fine, because then they really can't do anything, and I, uh, they can't really go into Anaconda here either, because it's not an effect monster. So I reason that, okay, they have to have something like pretty crazy, or just Huang Yun, in order for this to uh, turn out negatively for me. And again, uh, in case you're wondering why I don't think they have Long Gun here, it's because, uh, you know, if they just let this resolve, um, they could theoretically just go for Long Gun anyway. Although, to be fair, the Moe would be on my field, and that would make it harder for them to go into Chi Shao. So maybe that was a, just an incorrect assumption. Um, yeah, because I suppose that a Baron uh, would not be good enough, uh, especially, like, because the Draco Future would uh, not be negated yet, so... Uh, I think my assumption there, uh, looking back at it now, because I haven't watched this replay in a couple of days, uh, was just incorrect. So, yeah, they definitely could have had Longyun here, and maybe it was worth just to uh, hold Chalice. Um, but if I let them summon the token, then they could end on, like, a lot of plays. Like, they can end on, like, uh, the Baron plus uh, Chi Shell plus Blackout in hand, and that's pretty, pretty scary. So, I mean, I'd have to use my Chalice eventually, no matter what, so, like, that doesn't really matter too much, but... Yeah, we're going to go for the uh, the long yun here. Or they're going to go for long yun, excuse me, uh, which they did end up having. So going back to the chalice point, if I so if I had the read that they had long yun, but then I chose not to chalice this, then they could just go for this play. Um, 
and I couldn't interact because it would have another token here. They just go Baron first, and then my Chalice would be dead. So I, it was still correct to Chalice. I just did it for the wrong reason. Yeah, but it was still correct to Chalice because now this way, um, they have to like Chi Shell first, and if they want to go for Baron, they have to banish Blackout from their deck with the Chi Shell, which means they don't have to deal with Blackout unless they hard draw it. Um, so yeah, Chalice in there was still correct. Uh, they're gonna go for, uh, yeah they're gonna go for a uh, she shell they're gonna go for Moye draw they draw imperm which is really good and then they're gonna bash blackout so blackout gonna summon out a token and they're gonna go for the baron here um so yeah they're not worm locked because they call by the grave the ashina so that's fine and here they have a pretty pretty beefy board so we're gonna take 12 from the long gun they're gonna bear him to pop our draco future um thankfully they did not bosh his spin so that's good uh they're going to go ahead and attack a Robin. Should have taken 100 more damage, but um, not the end of the world. It doesn't end up uh, mattering at the end of the game, I don't think. So yeah, we add back Warbler. So we have pretty much four points of uh, ways to push past the board. Uh, we have Warbler, we have Canary, we have Nerval, and then we have like the search for Nerval, which is Keras because we didn't burn through it. So yeah, they're going to set Imperm, set Call by the Grave, and pass. And then we draw for turn a copy of Cobalt Sparrow. So we have to contend with Chi Shell plus Baron plus two back row, one of which I am assuming is Blackout because they banished it. And like they said too, they have Monk on Field, so it's like pretty good for them. Um, so yeah, regardless, it's still four disruptions against our four cards. So we have to really make this count. So yeah, we're going to start off by specialing out Warbler. Uh, drawing the Sparrow here actually was not bad. Because it makes it so that I can go and, you know, summon out Wagtail if this resolves, and then that could help us uh, get further into your engine via things like, you know, Bear Call to Special Out, um, and like get another body, things like that. So it's not a bad draw here. Um, so yeah, we're going to go and get our Warbler negated by the Chi Shell, you know, not really too surprising. And then from here, uh, another thing, by the way, that I didn't mention is that by keeping this Nerval in hand, not only is it like two forms of follow-up in this specific game state, but... We now have the option to overlay for whatever rank one, um, namely it's going to be assembled because I think that's the only rank one we have left. Um, so yeah, we can go for assembled and then we can go for Zeus, which is pretty solid. So yeah, we're going to know with this Nerval here and then we're going to activate the Nerval, we're going to banish four and then that gets impermed. Um, so here I'm like, okay, this might force out Baron, um, like maybe they don't want to you know, use Blackout here because I get a plus off of it, which is reasonable enough. Um, so, but once I re reveal the Imperm, I'm like, okay, so now I know it's Baron, and I'm still dead set in this being uh, Sudden Shift or Blackout. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to go ahead, or we're going to go ahead and choose to Link instead of Xyz. So, the reason I think I end up doing this is that even though going for the Zeus right away would help play around Blackout better because I would have, like, they wouldn't have the adequate targets for the Blackout since that's the target too. So that would be pretty good, uh, but our Zeus would get negated by the Baron, and then our Canary doesn't actually do anything at that point, because like we don't have any more rank ones to make, so I'm kind of reserving the Baron Canary for that play. And I want to do as much as possible in main phase one, see if I can like force out the Baron, and then wipe the board with Zeus, because like that would be the ideal case scenario, because we still have a fair amount of follow-ups here. Uh, so we link, or we link away into the Ferrigit, and then we're going to declare Nerval here, and then they chain Claw by the Grave, so I'm like, oh, that's both a relief and kind of bad because it cuts off uh, another way to threaten um, Shrike or Omen. So now I'm in a position where, okay, we have Baron Blossom. If they actually choose to let this resolve, we do lose um, because they should know that one of the cards in our hand is Barrow Canary. Um, so the only way, I guess, that um, it gets punished if they don't Baron Negate is if uh, we drew a tribe gate for turn. Because this is the unknown card that we drew for turn. So if they don't negate this, like we summon Cobalt Sparrow, and then we like search, but realistically, what do we search here? Like we can search, I guess, VD Crow, but that doesn't really do much. Um, and then none of the uh, the Lear Lusks at this point really do anything at that point. So yeah, it really is all down to this Barrow Canary. Uh, we don't really have a great way to force uh, Omen either. So basically, I'm just hoping that he negates this, or that they negate this, and then we're good to go if that happens. So yeah, they do negate, and then we you know activate Baron just to see what we can pick up. I'll pick up Tenki, which is actually pretty good. Um, now that Cobalt Sparrow doesn't really do a whole ton, we can just put it back. And we have Barrow Canary, so we can go ahead and force out the Zeus play. So 
Uh, it actually worked out pretty nicely for us. And then we can search DD Crow off of this uh, Cobalt right here. And we can just go for Assembled. And I guess the other thing too that I didn't think about was that... Um, I didn't think about this actually just now while commentating, but um, because I had this Wagtail engraved, I could just put the other material under Zeus anyway, even though I'm not playing Downard. So yeah, I suppose that would have been maybe the better play. Um, if I just like straight up overlaid the Nerval plus the Warbird that I had into this, and then went, okay, uh, attach Wagtail, and then go Battle Phase, and then attack three times, and go Zeus. Like Zeus will clear the board and play around Call by the Grave, or sorry, play around Blackout. I'd still get hit with Call by the Grave because it would detach all my materials, but it would still be okay because I would have, um, well, would it be okay, actually? Because my Nervel would be negated. So my hand would have been, my hand would have been Cobalt Sparrow and the Barrel Canary. But again, Barrel doesn't do anything afterwards. So yeah, I still think this is fine. Um, kind of like a lot of things I'm thinking about, but yeah. So that play would have lost harder to call by, but I mean, that's a one of versus Blackout, which is traditionally a two of. Um, and I suppose it became a one of after they banished one, so it was like equal likelihood, but uh, getting off topic here, uh, we're gonna go into battle phase and then we're gonna attack with the assembled. So yeah, this worked out anyways because we're able to stick the Zeus on the field. Um, so this kind of just played into your opponent's misplay of them just not, or of them uh, using the Baron on the uh, the Fairy Jit when they probably didn't need to. Um, unless, again, they had to read the Idris Tribe Gate for turn. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think I played that turn okay. It could have maybe been a bit cleaner, but... Um, just given the circumstances, it wasn't too bad. So we pass on DD Crow Zeus, which is you know pretty solid. Uh, this helps beat Summit. This helps beat Tenny or beat Tenny's, um, and then this beats like whatever top deck they have. So they get a draw Droplet, and then we just end phase Zeus wipe. And here it's pretty easy to just go for game. We just search Fractal off Tanky, and then we just go for Omen, and then we go for game. So that was a pretty crazy game one. It again goes to show that just because you go first doesn't necessarily mean that you win by like setting up an insane board. Uh, like you can get your board cleared, they can set up a pretty crazy board. They had four disruptions there, and then you can clear it with your engine cards. So yeah, that was a lot of back and forth for game one, and I did talk a lot there. So I think these other games were not as interactive, um, if I remember correctly. I actually can't remember what exactly happened, but yeah, they go first. Uh, our hand is gonna be Warbler, Nibiru, Dark Ruler, Nerval, Cobalt Sparrow. So we you know, draw a combo plus a couple of defensive cards. Actually, I think we might just win off the back of these two alone, uh, plus the fact that we have combo. But that first game, I think, was like enough of a good demonstration against this matchup. Third hand going first is going to be Crossout, uh, Longyun, Vessel, another Longyun, and Vishuda. So their hand's a little weird, but it works. Uh, they're going to start things off with Vishuda. Yeah, that was a very nice game one. Uh, we were kind of just talking about that in chat. Uh, they go for Monk, and then they're going to Vessel here. They're going to go and send Ashana to search for Adhara. Yeah, so they're going to go ahead and banish to summon out uh, the Vishuda, which they misplay because they should have summoned out Adhara first. Um, so yeah, I let them do that because uh, you know, on Doing Book, I don't mind as much. I know some people like really care about that kind of thing, but uh, in real life play, uh, I probably wouldn't let them take that back, unless like maybe it was like a friend at Locals, but... I like regionals definitely wouldn't like, let them take this back, but on Dueling Book I don't mind because I treat Dueling Book as just testing, because um, really like it's just rating, you know, it, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, like there's not really any stakes, uh, but yeah, they're gonna go for uh, Chi Shell here, and then they're gonna activate Chi Shell. So yeah, they don't have like a lot of their Sword Soul engine besides Long Yun, so yeah, they go for this here. Uh, if they went for Basha, that would have forced something to be rude because they could have gone for the the uh, Shelfing play. But yeah, they, doing it this way means I can like, hold on to the Nibiru. So that's pretty decent. Uh, they go normal summon, Moye, reveal the Long Yun, and then they're going to summon out Token here. And then they're going to go and uh, Adhara to go and add back. Uh, it doesn't matter if I nib here because they could still Adhara if I nib them. Uh, I can't remember if I nib here or not. They go for Draco Berserker. And, oh yeah, okay. So I, I reckon that... Because they're locked into Worms, like, they're either going to go for Basha or Draco Berserker. And so, if they go for Draco Berserker, that actually benefits me, because um, this Nibiru kind of is weird with a Turquoise Warbler, because it 
Mesa said I can't summon her just freely. But if um, they Draco Berserker my nib out of hand, it still attributes everything, and then uh, it just bashes it, so my board doesn't have a monster, and then I can just freely combo off with my Lily Lusks. So um, that's kind of why I let this go through, even though they get a free draw here off of the Moe. I wasn't like too concerned about it. I just know that I have to drop it before the uh, the Baron comes, or not Baron, uh, the Chengying comes down. Um, because Chengying actually is really good against this deck. Um, or the Tribe Gate portion, at least. So yeah, here I'm like... Um, I actually could just let them summon it, which is fair. And then I could just drop the Nibiru right there. So yeah, they're going to Long Yun burn us for 12. And then they're going to set uh, one cross out. And then they're going to Nib us here. And I guess they just don't play Nibiru in their deck for cross out because they didn't chain it. But that works out pretty well for us. I mean, we would have had the Dark Ruler anyways, uh, so that would have been fine. Um, so it, yeah, regardless, we had Dark Ruler. But yeah, basically, yeah, because they chose to banish it, um, this tributes as the first part of the effect. It doesn't like summon and then tribute. Um, so you tribute, it resolves as much as possible. It can't summon itself in the hand, so it can't summon the token. Um, so yeah, if you remember like rulings with like Orchestrated Babel, with like Nibiru after your Dark Locked, it's kind of similar to that. It's not exactly the same, but right, the concept is pretty similar. Um, yeah, so Nib didn't summon itself, so it can't summon the token. So the board's just clear. Uh, we draw Chalice too. So yeah, we would have had Chalice Dark Ruler even if they crossed out um, if they crossed out the Nibiru. And like I guess the only way is if like they use a cross out on Nibiru and then they cross out my Dark Ruler. That's like the only way we realistically like super hard to lose. Um, but yeah. Uh, this this is pretty much just a game right here because they don't have any uh, meaningful interruptions to stop us. So uh, we're going to War Board for Sparrow. We're going to search for Sapphire Swallow. And then going to go for Recital. They're going to search for Wagtail here. Um, they were talking about like being greedy going for Basha. Um, or being greedy by not going for Basha. I guess their end board would have been Shelfang plus... Well, they had a Long Yun in hand, right? So they had a, like... Shaofeng plus uh, Chengying, which would have been okay, but I don't know. I think that the play they went for was fine. Um, they ended on like pretty good interruptions, but yeah, we, we had the Nibiru regardless. So um, also the shameless uh, YouTube plug. But yeah, we're gonna go for a recital here. Pretty much just going through the motions. They don't have any interruptions. Um, so yeah, they're gonna go ahead and uh, let everything resolve. Of course, uh, we search Kit off the Nerval, and then we're gonna go for Draco Future. And then, yeah, they just submit defeat right there. So even though it was a 2-0, I think game one was really, really solid. Uh, it was a lot of back and forth, and by no means was that a free match. I really had to think that one out, and I still misplayed. So definitely learn from my misplays here. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, you can definitely do to like optimally play the deck. Uh, there's like there's a lot of small things uh, that add up very, very quickly. But yeah, that's going to be it. Um, I will be uploading the updated uh, version of this deck tomorrow. It should be by the time this goes up. So be on the lookout for that. Um, there's a fair amount that I changed, also a fair amount that did stay the same, uh, and there's things that I want to kind of talk about that I would like to get to in further stages of testing because I haven't tested everything I've wanted to yet um, because I like to test for like a fair amount, not just one match, and then just switch things out. Um, even though, of course, sample sizes are small and whatnot, but uh, that's kind of a small thing. But yeah, that's going to be it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you did. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.